flip. These bees are in rubbing season. No canola left, all the alfalfa's cut, sunflowers are practically done. So we were sending one box back for these colonies. I'm just so tired dealing with Robbie bees today. They're pretty aggressive. So that is it. These are going back into storage. The rest of the yards are being knocked right down. That is it. <laughs> my oldest daughter, her last year on the honey farm. How many years have been? Oh, it's not my last year. It's not your last one? Nah. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Never be my last year. Whoa, you talk like a farmer. <laughs> How many years so far have I hired you on the honey farm? Five. This five? is my fifth year. Fifth year. And that suits five years old? Yep. I've never gotten a new one. You're saving me money. Half duct tape right now. <laughs> you might as well just wear a jacket. Yeah. Yeah. You can graduate to a jacket now. No, there's that. I'm not complaining. Look at my yard. Hardly any covers anymore. It's two years now I've been able to invest into boxes. Slowly calling out the nasty ones. Piece of my heart though. Hard to get rid of the ones I start with, and I buy used ones from others. But let's see if I can find one here. Ah, here's one. Blue box. This is what I started out with. This is spruce that I cut down, and I had someone mill into boards, which I planed, and I cut, and I stapled, and I painted. And of course, fresh wood like that, I didn't leave it long enough to dry and shrinks. So they're always just, they're about half an inch too short. I need a better shim on the bottom. But these are all being called out. They're not, I'm calling every one of these out of the honey box. And they're going down the brood chamber where the bottom doesn't matter as much. So they're not out yet. They're not out of production yet. Eventually, I'll have everything standing tall with wood green. Fantastic construction. Dipped, I'll never paint again. And I can retire those covers. Retire them just for maybe places here and there like we're doing right now. All right. I'm not going to crack the top because I don't want to wreck the seal, but these hives are somewhat full of honey. So that's good. That should keep the line going. Hopefully I'm planning on having everything pulled in by the end of the month. That's when my workers, my school crew leaves back for school and that'll give us a full honey hose for Carrie and I to extract. But then we don't have to, we don't need two crews to be able to manage the bees, manage the honey house. We can just blast out the honey house a few days and we have to work the bees. We'll go out feed and work the bees. We should be able to manage that work. Let's just do a walk around to make sure we don't have any cracks. And then we'll head in for lunch.
So this is basically the only time I go down to the bird nest this fall. It's quite convenient because a lot of the field force is out in the field collecting hopefully nectar and pollen right now. And there's a lot of bees up in these boxes. So it provides me the opportunity to be able to look down and very easily assess the nest with a glance. What I'm looking for is nicely developed brood. My uh, queen is using basically eight to nine frames in this colony here. And she's pressed the brood nest up against the excluder. So I can see what she's doing just by looking down the top bars. So this looks really good. I have feed on the outside, frame of feed here, frame of feed here, brood from here all the way to here. So eight to nine frames of brood. They're gonna need some food if there isn't any feed coming in, so I gotta be careful. Um, that's it. So I'm gonna grab two pounds of patty. There's no use me going down into this nest because everything looks good. Put on the escape. You can put that box on. And harvest the boxes for honey. And we're going to be assessing to make sure that they're not starved out. We're going to be pretty quick here because we got to make sure that there is inflow coming in and if not we got to feed them. But the intensity of the robbing makes me wonder how much is actually coming in so we're going to monitor this pretty closely. So that's why it's important to have feed on hand inside here with the bias and a little bit of time to put on here. I just shook nectar off this excluder, so there's probably a nectar source close by. Brood, brood, honey, all the way around. So this colony is good. One and two. When we come back around, I'll see what kind of consumption they have on those patties. And if there's poor consumption, then that probably means there's something wrong. Oh, I gotta look for cracks too. I think that's good. But the colonies we will be going back down into, like we had two in a row right here for some reason. These ones didn't show any brood or any cappings from the top. So I didn't go down into them. Um, that one I think I've seen some supersedure cells. Maybe swarms, soup, queen replacement, whatever but I'm not wasting my time looking down into them and giving them some time to settle out whatever they're trying to do. So as we go into September, on our next round, probably with feed, we'll be digging down to all the colonies that have the tags on. These are our flags. This tells us to figure it out. So if they haven't figured it out by the beginning of September, we call them out, shake out the box, take it as a loss, that's all we can do. And maybe there's a brood nest going on down there, hopefully, a fresh little one. So we got to make sure that there's enough space, enough food, and just kind of set them up a little bit to help them prepare that winter nest. So I've been finding roughly about 10%, 15 bad yard will be 20% flags. Hopefully it doesn't hold at 20% of the bad ones. Hopefully some of those colonies queen themselves and carry on as they're supposed to. But that is just the way it is, you know. So we just take it as it comes. That's why we built nukes to fill in those dead spots. Manage the losses. This yard, the boxes aren't as in good a shape. Putting a few more covers on, but that's, we have lots of covers now. As the story goes. Oh, waiting on dad. What is the situation here? I'll look at this one and then I'll put the camera down. We are looking at a nest that is good. I can see cappings, nice cappings all the way down. I can 
see tappings all the way out to here. So at least five frames with brood on it, which tells me it's probably okay. One, two, thank you for your work. knocked down that last yard as we drive by a sunflower field I didn't know it was here they were bringing something in and it was sunflower pollen just a light shake of nectar so I just knocked down that yard sitting beside a sunflower field let's see where about this stage is at Like, looks like we're just about done here. Oh, just a little bit there. Oh, this is a good sunflower field. Yeah, these flowers are done. So we'll just be pulling the drags off this field. There's a little bit here. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. They'll use this nectar to keep themselves going. All these little fresh heads. To keep them from starvation. So there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of these late bloomers. Pretty well pollinated though. Look at that. <whistles> surprises, surprises. This will have filled those boxes up. If I didn't know any better. I'd say we still have flow coming in. Look at the bees piling into the colonies. That is flow. But We have a box that we pulled from one of these colonies on the truck. Which doesn't have fresh honey in it. They're heavy robbing. Look at that. Ouch. Look at that robbing. That tells me there is very little flow. It, you can pull it out. So, am I making the right decision whether or not to put these boards in? Because I'm, I'm getting some conflicting information here. There's probably what's going on is mild flow, which is perfect, because it'll keep these colonies going. A little bit of nectar flow, a little bit of pollen into these colonies, get that nest developed out just perfectly. Not enough to actually go into the second to store for surplus, for extraction. So I think maybe we hit the mark. We'll find out. We'll find out when we come back here. But the bees do have a way of telling me that I'm making the wrong decision. Little bastards are still swarming. Just reminding me that I actually have no idea what I'm doing. Shot in the dark. Checking back in one of the sites that we set boards on yesterday just to see what kind of nectar flow is going on. I'm more so concerned about them starving out on me. These were set yesterday, and as you can see, 
<laughs> I just cracked these and they're already getting robbers on them. But they're practically cleared out. I could almost pull them today. The board's working very well. Digging down into that single that we give back to them. And there are drags of nectar coming in. Just a scattering of nectar within the cells. So nothing that's really going to accumulate to anything that would provide any type of surplus. So that would be considered bee feed. I just want to go down to take a look at the patty. Lots of box of bees there. Bit of bearding and that single was rightful. So I'm a little bit concerned. I'm dropping them down to the single box now. Just because the robbing is causing a lot of issue as we're trying to put that second back on. So I'm going to be probably... Ah, they're going to be piling up in that bottom box. Let's see what they're doing to these patties. They are on the patties. These are put on yesterday. So I like to see that. It won't be long. Feeding that brood. I hope that's what they're doing with it. Man, I cannot believe how well these boards are working. Some years it takes a while, this time of year, to get them to want to migrate down into the bottom under the honey supers. But there must be, I guess that mild flow has got them stimulated to get out and working and just to resume that cycle within the nest. So that was good. Better get these on before the bees start to really find a tasty little treat. Mm -hmm. 